What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to For the Record, where you can get your tech fix without the bullshit. I am your host, Ainsley Bowden, joined as always by resident season gaming tech expert, Carl Dwyer. How you doing, mate? I'm good, thank you. I'm really good. How about you? You good? Yeah, yeah, man. Doing good. Sitting here, getting ready to talk games, talk tech. That's always a good time. Absolutely. So. And I think it's like, what, it's it's half eight in the UK here. It is, what, half two for you thereabouts? Yeah, yeah, mid-afternoon. Yeah, you know, yeah. just middle of the afternoon, recording a video about tech. You know, that's what we do. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> so today, uh, you know, we, we kind of started the series with a conversation on memory solutions, SSDs, those types of things. One of the other big topics that we knew right away we wanted to talk about was uh, the focus on when you look at the consoles, especially the Xbox Series X and S and PlayStation 5, is this whole RDNA 2 discussion that seems to pop up regularly and has been a topic of discussion since they launched. So what we want to do today is we're probably going to make this the first in maybe a couple episode series because there's an awful lot to uh, kind of weigh in on here and, and unpack, if you will. But we're going to start today by just talking about what RDNA 2 is, uh, some of the fundamental aspects of RDNA 2 from an AMD perspective, and then give you a very high overview of some of the features that the series consoles and PlayStation 5 use. So with that, Carl, why don't we start with RDNA 2 and, and just what that essentially means from an AMD perspective, from a graphics card perspective, from a production perspective. Uh, what is the core of when someone says these consoles are using RDNA 2 architecture? What does that mean? So RDNA 2 is essentially the latest sort of framework from, from AMD in terms of the iterations of graphics cards. So you have uh, things like RDNA 1 or RDNA as they call it and then RDNA 2. So they, they build things on more complex, um, uh, more efficient uh, production. So yep. RDNA 2 is a 7 nanometer for these two cars. So it's more efficient when it comes to power. Um, so you, it's more efficient in, in the fact that you don't need some of the same wattage uh, to get more bang for your buck. So uh, when you're thinking about consoles, it's not going to be a PC with a 1,000 watt power supply. These things titter around about 180, 200 watt mark. So the, these type of graphics cards that really and truly, the, 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 the graphics cards that sit inside these consoles uh, almost like a desktop, a laptop a graphics card or gra iteration of that. Mm -hmm. um, so the, if, if, you, if you really want to think about it really simply, RDNA or RDNA 2 is the bedrock of which, from a graphics card perspective, you plug all your features onto, like Lego bricks. Yeah. yeah? Gotcha. Uh, and then that feature set is malleable. It, it, it's interchangeable. You can add things. You can take things away. And when you have a working relationship with, with AMD, you can say, I've got my own creation here, my own Frankenstein part. <laughs> I want to put it onto this bedrock that you have, yep. which is RDNA 2. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. And so I think that's a, a good segue into kind of the differences between these consoles and some of the uh, things we heard, maybe misnomers we heard that were assumed based purely upon numbers or stat sheets that were given, right? So we've talked before around, if you look at the very high level, one of the very first things that was thrown out there about the Series X and the PlayStation 5 in particular was the teraflop number. Um, you know, 12.1 teraflops, I think, for Series X, 10.3 or something like that. For yeah, PS5. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Um, and, and what was very quickly known by kind of, you know, the the you know, other kind of tech people that really dig into this stuff, the engineers of the, the gaming industry was, sure, That's that has some relevance, of course, but when you're talking about reality and all the things that go into calculating how an image is put on the screen, there's far more things that factor into that equation than just this overarching kind of calculation. And, and so, you've said it right there, equation. Because that's all it is. That's all it is. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So why don't we talk about, you know, let's start with some of the basics uh, for this episode anyway, some of the basics of the differences between the Series X and PS5. So why don't we start with compute units? We know that the PS5 has 36 compute that's units. Right. Series X has 52. And right away, that was looked at as a, a large advantage by some for the Series X. And while it may be in some instances or some situations, why don't you explain why it's not as clear as just saying 52 is greater than 36? 
Yeah, sure. So one thing is marketing. <laughs> <laughs> right. You, you can straight away market 52 above 36 because it's a bigger number. Sure. Uh, teraflops, 12 to 10, it's a bigger number. Yeah. You know, straight away. And, and you know, if Sony was in the in that in in in, in, in that sort of um position, they Roll would or reverse, they would do the same thing. thing. They, they would have said, right, we've got a bigger number, let's market that. Right. Yeah. So we don't have that. Let's not talk about the GPU. Let's just talk about next generation, a controller, brilliant sound, and you know, great games. Yeah, let's talk about it. So you can see with that. Well, Microsoft has we've got the most powerful machine, which from an equation point of view, you definitely have. Yeah. You know, so, so that 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 was the the sort of the narrative that people grabbed onto, especially the, the Twitter brigade. They grabbed onto the the, the teraflops, the, the you know, the the CUs. Bigger number is always best. And, you know, if, if that bigger number was exaggerated, there was, there's going to be no denying that that's a more powerful machine. But these two machines are quite really, really similar. And we'll, we'll get into that as, as we go along. But essentially, when you're looking at uh, CUs, that's cores, compute units. Yeah. Yep. 36 on, 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 on the PlayStation, 52 on the Xbox. How you get that, how you get to the, the, the teraflops number is very, very simple. So it is CUs, so this is the equation, CUs, which is cores, times your clock speed, yep. which in the Series X, I think it's 1800, and, the, and the, for the GPU in, the, in the, uh, the, the, the PS5, I think it's somewhere in the region of about 2,033 megahertz, some there, thereabouts. Uh, yeah, um, 2,200, yep. Yep, so there they are. So you've got two things. So it's, it's CUs times... Uh, your clock speed, and then times two, because you can do two compute or two runs um, of cycles per clock. Cycles, so, yep. so you can do it, so it's times two. Yep. That gives you your teraflops number. So CUs times clock speed times two. Yep. That is so, so the, 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 the equation in, in, in brief uh, for, for what it is. And that will give you your, 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 uh, uh, your 12... Uh, on your uh, your Xbox and your and your ten uh, teraflops on, on your PlayStation Five, what it doesn't do is take into consideration any of the features that sit on top of these GPUs. So it doesn't take into consideration on the, on the Xbox side of things, VRS. Right. It doesn't take into consideration anything that it would do outside of that through the API layer. So DirectX Ultimate, mm -hmm. um, things like um, uh, sampler feedback. Yeah, what we, what, what we talked about in episode one. It doesn't take any of that yeah. in, 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 into consideration. So you already start to think a little inkling and go, wait a minute, that's theoretical performance, and you're not taking into consideration any other of the features that sit on that rasterization pipeline. So basically getting triangles, getting something on the screen. Right. Yeah, so for, for the Xbox, one of the big things VRS, tier two VRS that they're getting to now, which is an efficient way uh, of, of rendering just what you need on screen. Really cool from an API layer that's that's uh, it's integrated onto the GPU as well, but that's a really good feature of DirectX Ultimate uh, and, and, mm -hmm. the, and the, the RDNA uh, two cards on, on, on Xbox side of things. Yeah, and I and believe, what... correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that that's kind of just now coming to fruition to where it's going to be usable in games in the future. Like we haven't seen the benefits of that fully yet. No, you haven't. And you're, you're probably talking about, you know, maybe 10% in, in, in some cases, maybe right. variable. If you really get under the hood, maybe they can drive some more performance in that one. It's not a massive, massive game changer, but it right. will add some benefit to, 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 to getting things on the screen and making things, you know, maybe smoother, not having to stress the graphics card as much, you know, the GPU as much because you can work more efficiently. Yeah. So then that's that's on, on the Xbox side of things. On, on the PlayStation side of things, it doesn't take into any consideration what the elusive geometry engine is or what it does. <laughs> right. Yeah. It doesn't take into consideration anything to do with the cache scrubbers that for them 36 CUs, they remove stale cache at a rapid rate. So they, they 36 CUs act more efficiently. Okay. Um, because you're not having to leave data in there and manually remove it or write a script to remove it. So you, you start to get a sense of that is just a number, but doesn't consider doesn't consider other things that contribute to being more efficient in getting graphics on the screen. Right. 
Right. And that kind of, at least for this initial episode, as we talk through this, um, that leads to what you were explaining prior to us starting to record, because I'm not as savvy on these things as you are. Um, but really, you mentioned it there with your rasterization pipeline, which at the end of the day is all of these, um, whether it be the APIs, the features, anything that can be used to produce the on-screen image, uh, if I have that correct. And yes. at the end of the day, what we're seeing and we'll probably continue to see for the majority of this generation, save for maybe some first party differences and nuances here and there that are better at optimizing certain platforms specifically. I would argue that almost universally, you're going to see what we've already started seeing. And it's that is that these consoles, when you get through all of this and all of these layers, more of which we'll talk through in detail in the next episode, is that it, it ends up in a very similar uh, or comparable end result on screen. Is that fair? Uh, absolutely. The rasterization output of these two machines, it, it, there's a, uh, a, a, uh, an acronym used uh, to measure these uh, called ROPS, rasterization output. Yeah. Uh, and they are both measured at 64 ROPS each. Now that rasterization output is at the end of the graphics pipeline. So getting stuff onto the screen. Yep. Yep. They're both 64 ROPS in, in, in that, in that measurement. So you're never going to see massive differences. I think where you are going to see differences in the teams, the studios, the tech teams that get the best out of, um, these two machines. And you'll see that I think the biggest differentiator is going to be one studios two the API layer. Mm. So direct X ultimate and what that can bring to the party, which is looking pretty darn good. Right. Um, and the, uh, and the API itself, direct X ultimate, that also is a PC one. So that really just sings to what Microsoft were trying to do. They're just trying to do build one thing that you can just run on your PC yeah. Um, your, your Xbox Series S X, um, and also your Steam Deck. You know, it's it's yeah. it's so it, it it's a really good, as you always put it, and you always sing the praises of ecosystem. Yeah, yeah, really well thought out. Even down to the GPU that's in the Xbox Series X is very similar to the PC version of the of the AMD card. Right, there's yeah. a reason for that. It makes it easier for you to de develop once for a whole bunch of stuff yeah. instead of PlayStation's sort of, or Sony's sort of approach to it is, we'll have our own API layer, which is called GNM, which is the low level API. And then you've yeah. got GNMX. Guess what the X stands for? I don't have a clue, extra. It's the, <laughs> <laughs> X stands for DirectX compatibility layer. So if you're converting uh, okay. a PC title sure. to PC, to, to PlayStation, you use the API GNMX because it's a, it's a it. derivative. Yep. Which is why uh, we know that you know PlayStation behind the scenes has been hiring more kind of experts in that space to optimize their PC development. Where we're on, we're on um, Microsoft side of the fence, where you've got a common sort of set of tools to pr to produce something for PC or Xbox. Yeah. With on um, on Sony side of things, oh uh, wait a minute, let's go and buy a company in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what they did. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. Well, I think um, you know, I think if nothing else, this gives us a good foundation, no pun intended, there around uh, starting this kind of broader RDNA two discussion, and really, which RDNA two is kind of this architecture, like we said, but really the the graphics processing capabilities and all the nuances that go into the different platforms and how they produce uh, the on-screen images, like we said, on-screen images, excuse me. So um, I think with that, that's a good foundation to set us up for the next episode where we'll talk about things what like pixel fill rate, texture fill rate, uh, and all the you know kind of intricate details of uh, the differences between these two platforms. Uh, sound good? Absolutely. Let's follow Alice down into the rabbit hole next next one. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope that uh, I hope that gives you a, at least a core foundation of what when people talk about RDNA two, you understand what they're referring to now for the Xbox Series consoles and PlayStation Five. Uh, and we will be back soon with a follow up episode two where we continue this conversation with more uh, of the details. But for now, I am your host Ainsley Bowden, joined as always by resident tech expert. 
Carl Dwyer. Carl, thanks as always, mate. And I look forward to our next conversation. Absolute pleasure. All right.